Okay, so now that I got the wheels done, let's look at the trucks again real quick. You can see at this point in time with this particular engine, the trucks have gathered quite a bit of grime and you can see they're starting to get pretty dirty. Um, but it's a very nondescript kind of a grime color. It's not just one color, it's a multitude of different colors. And then you get some rust streaks and stuff, but we'll add that kind of detail later. And then there's some mud splatter. Again, we'll get that later, but right now we're just trying to model this color. Uh, it's on the fuel tank too, so we'll be doing the fuel tank later. Uh, and then here's this rear truck with that grime color. So we're going to be trying to replicate that. And I call it Union Pacific Grime Tone. Uh, you can kind of see it a little better on the plow too. This is the color we're going to create though. So, looking at the truck frames, I'm going to start with these two here. Uh, this other set in the back will be for the uh, fireman's side. So, Starting with this guy, I will be weathering it with another medium number five dry citadel brush, and I love these. These are great for this kind of work. Um, and I didn't used to weather trucks this way, and the last time I ever showed myself weathering trucks, I just did them right on the model, but I don't like the fact that I'm not able to get into these corners and crevices and everything else. So being able to take the side frames off on these Atherin units is nice because you can basically get in here and all these other little places and make sure to paint everything so it's really nice so I just take them off now over here on the paper I have um, a little bit of paint mixed in together I just dumped out a little earth brown and a little flat black acrylic on this paper and I'm gonna basically make a grime color that matches the prototype so looking at the photos it's dark but it still has quite a bit of a rusty overtone to it more than any other real road that I can think of actually so I'm going to start by mixing up a little of the black and I'm going to work in that rust color just a little bit at a time to get this color that you can see on this paper. This is the color we're going for. Now, if I zoom out, you can see the truck frame. And I'll try to weather this. I'm going to take a little bit of the paint off on a paper towel. So basically we're going to dry brush. And then I'm going to start at the top. Now I'm going to work this color in to all these little areas. Now, we're getting pretty rough with the brush right now, and so this is something I probably should mention. If you're going to do this kind of work with this kind of brush, make sure to use a dedicated brush for this. You can see this one's all frayed out. It's pretty beat up at this point. You can see that. I use a brush specifically for this method. Um, this is how they normally look. I don't like to use a brand new brush for this. I want to keep brushes like this flat and clean for wash effects and painting wheels and stuff like that. So I don't like to mess with these. I only have dedicated brushes for this kind of work, like these that are already basically beat up, used up, just for this kind of work. So, just something I thought I should mention. Get a little bit more color and back into it here. You can see we've coated the top of the truck. I'm going to work that color down again, hitting all the angles, making sure to get everything covered so that there's not any little shadows of gray left. Hit the back of the truck frame. I'm just picking up a little more paint. <clears throat> I'm trying to keep the color right now relatively consistent, so I'm working hard as I make more of this paint mixture to keep the color consistent. But, like, especially on the bottom of the truck is where that a lot of that grime is going to be concentrated. So I'm starting there. Brake cylinder. Now I'm going to work it to the side. Now I'm really starting to dry brush here. I'm just putting a thin layer of paint on the trucks right now. And I'm just lightly working it in. I'm going to be adding a lot more effects to this later on, so. 
I'm going kind of easy on the paint right now. Gonna mix in a little bit more brown here, and I'm just gonna continue to work it in. So you can kind of see that. Compare it to regular side frame. <clears throat> but this is another one of those things. Once you get going at it, and you know what you're you're doing. You can blast right through these. I mean, it only takes a second. And this is the, the base coat of weathering, too. I'm going to be, again, enhancing this with other effects. I'll put, put some chalks and powders and everything else on this later on. So this is just the paint coat. And again, I'm just going around, working the grime in. Some of these are varying in color a little bit here, so I'm just trying to mix the color according to what I see as I go, because it's not all the same. I'm just going to do these two as well. I'm not going to show the others. You can watch me the, do these first two, and that'll give you a, a basic idea of how I'm tackling this. Streak it down, keep it light. Load up my bristles. The rear truck on this engine is particularly rusty, so I'm actually going to go back and add a little bit more of the straight earth brown and build this up by blotching it on like this. I'll just build it back up at the top. I'm going to call that good for the moment. I'll paint the uh, roller bearings to match the wheels. That's something else I probably should mention, so we'll do that later. but. I will, probably won't show that, but there's the the first two side frames done for the engine. Okay, so setting these aside, let's look at the fuel tank real quick. The nice thing about the Atherin is you can take the fuel tank off, and it's easier to weather. So, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and do the ends first, and I'm going to grind these up and put the kick-up spray. i got to do some fading effects on the side. Um, but I'll do that a little later as well. So, again, taking my mix over here. I'll take a, a slightly darker mix and then lighten it. And then... There we go. I lost my other paper towel. It fell off the table. There we go. So, the grime on the ends of the fuel tank is usually the worst, so I start at the bottom to try to match the kick up, and I try to get in the corners of everything, and then you streak it up, like this, to match the, uh, the wheel spray.
And then, you know, as you go, it's too much there. I really just streak it. I'm going to try to focus on the more defined lines now, so I'm going to make an even darker brown color over here on the paper. Load my bristles up, and again I'm just going to start at the base, and I'm going to add them like so. Just to get those defined kick up spray lines built in or worked in. And then sort of fan it out just a little bit. Not too much though. So, something like that basically on this fuel tank. And see how nice that looks. This end, pretty much the same. Now obviously when you're working with, you know, I, I detailed this fuel tank up prior to working on it, so I put the, tank, the, the hoses, the tank on and everything else, and, sorry about that, um, you gotta try to be a little careful with these details, not to bust them up as you're working, so again, it's just all about having a light touch and being very careful, and just work around it, there's no need to get violent with this, just take your time, work around it, gently. Get above the tank here. Now remember, this is acrylic. Everything else is sealed up under this. So if you need to, you can always take a Q-tip and come in here if you overdo it a little bit and fix that. I'm going to very carefully get in between there. Underneath the tank. Work that in. Oops. See, like right there, that was an accidental streak that put on there and I didn't want it so I'm going to take my q-tip load it with some water I'm just going to wipe that off see easy now you have you can basically start all over again so load up my bristles again and create those defined kick up lines And just like the other end, now we'll do the the fine lines for the spray, the kick up spray. Just being really sloppy with this, I want it to look like it's just kind of splattered all over the place because that's basically what happens when you have kick up. Just goes all over the place and splatters around. And I'm just fanning it out like that. Something basically like that. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of this to the top of the tank. Just gonna enhance a few little spots. And in fact, I'm gonna white lighten this up just a little bit. Go over with more of like a wash, like this. I'll just thin this out a little bit. But see, this is this is what's nice about these atherin parts is you can take them off and do this detail work. Because imagine trying to get, you know, doing this, trying to get past, like, the uh, air tank or something like that, it's very hard. So, being able to take the pieces off and doing them separately, you really can get in here and do a lot more detail work. You gotta make one more little wash. Trying to keep it light, I'm not trying to go too crazy with this. And just put it in. Because remember, all this grime is just going to basically sit in all these cracks and crevices, and this is where you want it to be built up. You want to have the shadows and everything. Another little bit. The top of the tank there again. So, 
I'm gonna do some more effects to the fuel tank later. I'll put like the splatter and everything on there and I'll build up the color as well. I won't show that though. This is just the basic look at doing the fuel tank and getting that prepped. So this is about ready. Like I said, I'll do the spray effects and then I'll put the fuel tank back on. We can uh, do the fade effects later and everything else.